is this ripping off the post of it's the like Lion the, King? It looks kind of like it, yeah. <laughs> it looks like it's meant to be a movie poster. <laughs> it does, actually. Imagine a blueprint, a step-by-step -step guide, a case study where we peel back the curtains and show you what it takes to sell on Amazon. Welcome to the Million Dollar Case Study. The 80-20 rule is useful to keep in mind. It states that 20% of what you do will bring you 80% of the value. In other words, there'll always be a few key tasks that will make the biggest impact on your business. So keep this rule in mind. Don't get bogged down with all the tiny things that ultimately don't matter as much. Focus your time on the things that move the needle the most. So now we have a product idea in mind. Today I'm gonna to help you understand exactly how to do the branding, trademarks, and packaging for that product. So now let's get started with one of the lesser important subjects, and that is Amazon store names. So people often get confused between this and your product's brand name. So your store name is your shop front, it's for your overall seller account. Customers can see this, however, to be honest, most customers don't really know it's there and don't really care about it. So when you're thinking about your store name, just understand that number one, it doesn't really matter, and number two, I'd recommend you just make it something generic. Also, keep in mind that you can always come in and change your brand name, so again, this part doesn't matter that much. Our store name, for example, is just called Jungle Creations. It's a very generic brand name. It's not called Jungle Sticks or Jungle Snugs or any of the other products that we have. We just made a generic name that we could sell anything under. The branding of your product is a little more important. Oh, it is and it isn't. Let me explain. So first of all, especially when you start out and you launch a brand new product on Amazon, and even for a good period after that, no one's going to be going to Amazon searching for your brand. People are finding your product because they're searching for that particular type of product. This is how the majority of consumers behave on Amazon. They search for the product thereafter, not a brand name. If you go into Keyword Scout and you start looking at search volumes for these really big, well-known brands, you'll see that people just aren't searching for them. This is just how Amazon works and why I think that so many private label sellers have been successful on Amazon up against these bigger brands that are on there also. All right, so they search for a type of product, then they look at who gets good reviews with a good price, has nice photos and that sort of thing, and that's how they decide to purchase. I buy everything that I own on Amazon. <laughs> and I would say like, 99 out of 100 searches that I do on Amazon do not involve a brand name. Like I'm just searching for the product. Right. People typically go to the Amazon search box, search field <laughs> box, sure, and just enter what their style of product that they're looking for. So I think, right. uh, you know, that's one of the other reasons I'm like, man, on Amazon, does it really even make a difference? 20 years ago before reviews on the internet, the way that you gauged the quality of a good was based off the brand name, your perception of that brand. But today in the modern age, that has been replaced with customer <laughs> reviews. So they the brand name of your product isn't really important, at least as far as people searching for it goes. But it is important for something called Amazon Brand Registry. This is a program where you enroll your brand on Amazon and they give you access to a whole bunch of additional features on your listing. You get videos and additional protection if anyone tries to rip off your product. So I would say that Amazon Brand Registry is almost a must have to sell on Amazon. But in saying that, you don't necessarily need to have it straight away when you start up. And that's because one of the requirements for enrolling into brand registry is to have a trademark for your brand name. Now, this of course costs money and can take eight or nine months to process. So the reason that I say you don't need this to start selling is because I don't want it to be a roadblock that stops you from getting started. Getting started as quickly as possible is always going to be the best option, period. 
But I would be thinking about getting brand registry and starting that process as soon as you have the money and it kind of makes sense for you in your situation. As I do believe it is an important long-term aspect of selling on Amazon. And I'll talk a little bit more about the options for getting brand registry in a little bit. What are your thoughts between uh, creating a brand on Amazon versus just selling random products? My e-commerce is exclusively focused on that brand, that one brand. And the reason for that is because I feel that the time that I'm willing to dedicate to e-commerce, I'd rather put that into the brand because it's already doing really well. Uh, a lot of social proof, uh, brand recognition. I just think with the opportunity of social media, there's so much you can do with your brand. There's just such opportunity there. I don't understand why somebody, I do understand why somebody wouldn't <laughs> build a brand. I remember when I was doing Seller Diaries, it came down to like this like chicken feeder that like had really good numbers, but I really wanted to build a brand and I was like, can't do it. Like, sorry, Greg. I know it was funny when you said like, sorry, Greg, because that's exactly what Carrie and I did when we were doing product research. <laughs> Because we're like, yeah, looking through products, we're like, oh yeah, that's like got good demand, and like, yeah, yeah, and then we're like, oh, a pet product. We're both like, oh, pet products, and we're right? Like, aren't, they, aren't they super like, you know, they're, they're like super competitive? Greg says to like find something weirder. We're like, uh, sorry, Greg, we really want to sell like a dog product. Uh, so there are opportunities where you just may not have exposure to that particular category of products. So that's one one way. You know, the second the second option, you know is to go for something that you really love and that you have a passion for. Uh, and so, as I mentioned, you know, as I'm going into pet products right now, I have two Labradors. Uh, they are my uh, models for all of my product samples. Uh, and so I can try different things, you know, for, for pets that, uh, that really means a lot to me, like from a personal perspective. And I, I find that very fulfilling and frankly, a lot of fun. I think that uh, there's a space for both. I don't think that there's one right or wrong way. Uh, I think that in the early stages, it really comes down to what is your uh, knowledge in terms of you know scaling and growing a business. If you're just getting started, then you just want to be able to hit the ground running. And you right now, uh, building a, a big ginormous brand isn't critical. It, it isn't important. I think there's. I think that one of the beauties of an Amazon business is you get to make it what you want it to be, what you think works best, what's comfortable for you, what's not comfortable for you, however you want to do it, it's yours, right? So um, I am more into product development than I am into branding, uh, just as a personal, you know, habit. I don't know. It's just not some branding isn't something that's like comes naturally to me or that I love. So I think you can succeed either way, right? You're like competing on price or you're really building an audience, repeat buyers, building out a product line. So there's there's multiple different ways to, to be successful. All right, so if you're selling on Amazon, you wanna think of a brand name that you can trademark and enroll into brand registry. Now, before there was the trademark requirement, people would have different brand names for different products, but now that may not be as practical because you probably don't wanna go out and get multiple trademarks for each of the different products and product brand names that you sell. If you're already planning just to sell products in one niche, let's say baby products or sports products or, or whatever else, then you'll be fine putting everything under that one brand name that you're using. But if you're just wanting to sell a number of different products like we do here at Jungle Scout, then you might wanna consider a more generic brand name that you can sell any products under. So in the past here at Jungle Scout, we've had the Jungle Sticks, the Jungle Snugs, and the Jungle Sliders. Because we're intending to sell different products in different markets and not just the one product line, then for us, it makes more sense to have a generic brand name. So for this season, I'm taking our store name Jungle Creations and applying for a trademark for that one. Then no matter what we sell in the future, it'll make sense under that name. So let's go through a basic search for a trademark. The official website for searching for trademarks in the US is uspto.gov. Uh, unfortunately, it is a little bit hard to navigate, 
but that's okay, we'll work with what we've got. So once you've navigated here, just come over to Trademarks and search Trademark Database. To keep things simple, we're just gonna come up to Basic Wordmark Search. Now we're just gonna type in, let's try Jungle Scout. All right, so if we click on this one, you'll see that this uh, is Jungle Scout's trademark. A few things to understand or just general tips to know is that if there are other spellings of the word, then you should search for those as well. Uh, a good example of that is the Jungle Sticks. So let's take a look at that example. The way that we spelt our brand is Jungle Sticks. You see there's only one trademark for this one and that's the one that we submitted. So if we were just looking to see whether Jungle Sticks was uh, taken or not, at the time there would have been zero results. But what you would need to do is to test out different spellings. So a more common way to spell this would be Jungle Sticks spelt the normal way. And so this is where you would see that there is in fact a Jungle Sticks trademark, but you can also see that it is currently dead. So this is the search that we would have done at the time and discovered that there was no other sort of competing trademarks necessarily. So keep that in mind when you're doing searches. All right, so coming back to brand names in general, keep in mind that originality is quite important. If you think of Facebook or Twitter, Google, these words had no meaning before. They didn't exist in a dictionary. Uh, they were a very original term when the companies came up with them. And then over time, they became known. Jungle Scout is a really great example. So when Greg first came up with it, he chose it because it's related to what the service offers, but at the same time, it's still original. So think jungle, like the Amazon jungle, and scout because you're searching or looking for products. It had no other meaning at the time. It was quite original. And so this is kind of a, a great recipe, if you will, for brand name ideas. A couple of tools that are quite useful are NameStation and NameMesh. Both of them help to find original brand names. So let's just go through a demonstration here on NameMesh. What's nice about this site is that it tells you right away which domains are available, which is really useful. You want this for number one, general brand protection. You'd ideally have your .com domain name so that someone else isn't using it. And then if someone else is using it and your business ends up growing, then quite possibly uh, sell it back to you down the road for a large sum of money, which might be okay, but it'd just be easier to have that up front. Also, if the .com is available, then that's actually a great indicator that the trademark's not taken because most people wouldn't have a trademark for a term and not own the .com. So NameStation is nice because it gives you different options like compound words, business names, all these different types of keywords. It tries to kind of put two words together, uh, so that could be helpful. You know, you could start to put in different keywords in here, then it will start to either join these keywords or compound them or something along those lines. One thing that Kerry and I always thought would be fun would be something like jungle mats, for instance, just following in suit from the, the jungle snugs, jungle sliders, jungle sticks, that sort of thing. But let's just type that in as a starting point, jungle mats, and then just see if it gives us some additional ideas. Jungle Mats is available. I don't know if that's like the most creative thing ever. Uh, maybe we could also try Jungle Pets. Jungle Pets isn't available. You can see some other domain names that are. And really I'm just kind of scrolling through to see if there's anything interesting that I like here. Not seeing anything that I love or feel is super useful. Another tool that you can use is Google's image search. So by looking at images, this helps you come up with more ideas that could be inspiring for your particular product. All right, so I haven't got many results that I like. I think the trouble here is that I need to find 
I need to find more related words. So you can go to somewhere like thesaurus.com and that's gonna find similar words to things. So let's just let's just type in dog uh, and see what other words there are. Bow wow, bow wow products. <laughs> I don't know. Mutt, jungle mutts. No. Uh, pooch, jungle pooch. Maybe. Let's take a look. If so, if I come back to let's say we're in name mesh, let's just try jungle pooch. I don't know if that's like a great name, uh, but Jungle Pooch is available. So I don't know, there we go. That's kind of an interesting, unique name. I don't know if it sounds that great, but maybe, maybe it could be. So let's come down here. Let's look at some of these categories. We've got fun, uh, junglepooch.com, just different spellings of it. Glow pooch, no. Mountain pooch, forest pooch. <laughs> All right, so I'd say probably jungle pooch is like the best out of all of these. I'm not seeing any other ideas. All right, so that's a, a very quick example, jungle pooch. Uh, I'll leave it up to you guys whether that's a good example or not. So essentially now we'd move down the list. Let's go to USPTO, we're gonna search the trademark database, do a basic word search and type in jungle pooch. No records were found. I can't think of any different ways to spell that one, but if there were, you'd try out a few different variations just to make sure. So maybe I could remove the space, uh, that kind of thing. Another great resource is noam.com as well as namecheck.com. Both of these will do a basic trademark search and they'll also search a whole bunch of social accounts and domain names so that you can see what's been taken and what's available. This is really nice because ideally, you'd wanna have all of these social accounts too. Once you decide on your brand name, it's worth going ahead and registering on a bunch of these platforms, even if you never intend to use them, but at least you own them if you ever do want to publish content on them or whatever else. Plus, it's also another good indicator, but at least no one else with a web presence is using that as their trademark. All right, so we'll go through an example, first using Jungle Pooch, and then we'll go into Jungle Creations. One thing to note on noam.com is that you can't leave spaces, so, I'm just gonna type in jungle pooch because often when you're registering for social media handles, you can't leave spaces there either. So now I can see that jungle pooch is actually available on a, a lot of these. As I said, this is also kind of a, a good indicator that there's no trademark live for this particular uh, handle, which we also found on the USPTO website. Again, it's not the end all be all, it's not 100% certain, but these are just good indicators, okay? Now I'm gonna do the same thing again for jungle creations. And if I come down here, you can see some of these aren't available, but there's also a good number that are. So that is noam.com. Now we're gonna come across to name check as well and you'll see the similar kind of thing. So if we go jungle pooch, this is an example of what you wanna see where we've got all green, all these different names are available. And then if we also do jungle creations, the .com is taken, unfortunately, that isn't me, uh, I'm afraid, but a lot of these other ones are available and that's what I'm gonna consider, purchasing up some of these different ones. Probably the .net, .co, uh, maybe even like the .store might be a, a, a relevant one for you know this e-commerce shop. So that's how you use these two resources. But this one is just an example. As I mentioned earlier, in our case, I wanna be able to sell multiple products underneath this brand. So we're not gonna go with you know, uh, a more pet orientated name for our pee pads. Instead, we're gonna go with something like Jungle Creations that we can sell this product under. And then if we sell products in the future from different categories, 
all of them can go under jungle creations. So let's try that one as an example too. So jungle creations. And you can actually see there's one out of one record here, and that is actually our trademark, which is live. At the time of initially doing this search, there were no other variations. But the other things you could try as well, I would take maybe the S off and see if there's a jungle creation. Or in this case, there's not, I can't really think of another way to spell this one. So this is kind of a good initial indicator that there are no, uh, no other marks. So after you've gone through this process, maybe looking at Google Images or using tools like NameStation or NameMesh, you hopefully now have a good idea of what a brand name for your product could be. So at this point, I would still do a few more checks before deciding on that name. One is checking for the .com, which we talked about. Uh, another place to check the availability would be godaddy.com, where you can essentially search for and purchase domain names. .coms are becoming less and less available these days, but they're still nice to have if you can. If yours is not available, you can see if it's for sale. Oftentimes people will register a whole bunch of uh, .com domain names in order to try and sell them down the road. So if you can buy yours for a few hundred bucks, it might be worth it if you're really serious about going all in on this. If not, it might not be worth it and then you can either just get a, a .co or a .io or .shop or something else and just worry about the, the .com down the road that's still gonna be better than not owning any of the related domain names at all. The next thing I would look at before making a final decision is the trademark and making sure that a trademark for this name isn't already taken. As I mentioned earlier, you do need a trademark in order to get brand registry, which I would recommend once it makes sense for you. So you wanna make sure that the trademark is available. So real quick, definition time. A trademark is a symbol or a word that represents a product or a company. This is where you might be familiar with seeing the little TM superscript or the R with the, the circle around it. And what those stand for are trademark and registered trademark. So a common misconception is that you have to register your trademark in order to sort of own that mark. And that's not really the case. In the US, it's actually a first to use law as opposed to first to register. So what that means is that even before you register your trademark, you can still put that little TM at the top of it. And that's saying that you're claiming that mark and that other companies can't use it to represent their product or to mislead customers into thinking that it's their company name, all right? Then onto registering trademarks. After you do that, you get to put the little R with the circle around it. That's important for Amazon sellers, and this is what's required in order to get brand registry. So first up, what does brand registry give you? Well, the first thing is enhanced brand content, which gives you additional images and text on your listing, really making it stand out. You also get the ability to add videos to your listing, which is a really great way to help convert people on your listings. It gives you access to sponsored brands, which allows more advertising features and spaces, such as headline ads at the very top of search pages, displaying up to three products at a time. You also get Amazon stores, which is a really great way to lay out all of your products in one spot, this is especially great if you're driving external traffic to Amazon. This is a good place to send that traffic because you then don't have other people's ads appearing on your store, unlike on your product detail page. You get brand analytics, which gives you insights into what search terms are trending on Amazon. One of the other great benefits is better protection of your brand and the ability to report anyone that is infringing upon your brand or products. And I'm sure that Amazon's only gonna add more and more benefits to this program in the future. So I highly recommend this. All right, so how do you go about getting it then? Well, first up, just Google Amazon brand registry, click the link, and then enroll, and you can start the application. But as I mentioned earlier, you do need a trademark in order to enroll. One of the places that you can find an attorney to apply for a trademark is the Jungle Scout Market. Here you can find freelancers that are experienced with the requirements for 
Amazon sellers specifically. This includes companies that can look after this trademark application. The other way to go about it is using a program called the Amazon IP Accelerator. Here, Amazon has partnered with specific law firms, and if you apply for a trademark through them, then it expedites the process and Amazon will let you into brand registry in a matter of weeks rather than months. So this is a really good option and something that I've actually gone through the process of recently. So to start, select one of these companies. I chose Idea Legal, but I imagine they're all pretty much the same. Next up, you just click contact in order to reach out to them and then they will contact you back. Let me run through the steps and what happened throughout this process as I've already gone through it. So within uh, a day, I heard back from Idea Legal. They just had uh, a welcome email and they also attached uh, a really helpful document that laid out all of the information that you'd need to know who's eligible, what sort of marks are eligible, all of that kind of stuff is laid out in this document, which is really, really helpful. They outlined the fees here, which was super handy. So at an overview, the way that the pricing structure works is based off of the number of classes that you apply for, or basically categories, like which category are you registering your trademark for? So the category has to align with, or the class has to align with the category of products that you're planning to sell in. So with Idea Legal, it costs $600 to apply just for one class, and then it's an extra $150 after that. I can't remember exactly what class it was. Let's say it was just dog products or, or pet products, something like that then if I also wanted to sell in another class or at least register my trademark under a different class, then I could add on additional ones for $150. You can do this in the future as well. So I just enrolled in the one class for $600. You then pay an additional $275 to file this with USPTO, bringing your total to $875. So I actually found this program to be quite affordable, more affordable than some other companies that I've seen out there. My understanding is that these companies in the IP Accelerator program have these pre-negotiated discounted rates with Amazon that they're offering to Amazon's customers that go through this program. So I actually think you get a pretty good deal on price, as well as the fact that you're escalating and getting through the process much, much quicker. That alone makes it worthwhile, but the fact that it's a really good price as well, to me makes it kind of a no-brainer. The other thing that they offered before diving into the actual application is the option for them to perform a trademark search. There's two different levels. For $500, they will perform a sort of a high level search to kind of see if there's any trademarks similar that might prevent you from getting one, or you can pay $1,800 and they'll do a much more thorough check. So what I decided to do was to go with the $500 option. The reason being is that I'd done a couple of those basic checks, which I've showed you guys. And from those basic checks, I kind of felt like there wasn't any uh, competing trademarks that were very, very similar to Jungle Creations. So I didn't feel the need to do the very in-depth one, but I felt the, the $500 check was kind of a uh, in-between option where I'm not paying uh, the ultimate price, but I am, I am doing my due diligence and getting some kind of check. So that is the option that I went with. So from there, they sent me an engagement letter. I paid the $500 to keep the process moving forward. It only took them a day to turn around this basic check. And this is what I received back. So as you scroll through, these are the most similar trademarks that they found. If I scroll through here, we've got Jungle Buff, and you can kind of see what sort of products they sell, Trendy Den Creations, American Creations, and as you can see, uh, Canine Creations. A lot of these aren't very similar to Jungle Creations at all. Right at the very bottom, they give you a conclusion 
basically stating what their thoughts are on your success rate. Here they were telling me that they felt there's a pretty good chance that jungle creations would go through. They can never guarantee it, of course, but in their opinion, they felt like there was a good chance. So at this point, I decided to proceed with the full application. I paid that fee. We sent a couple of emails back and forth as they needed some additional information about the uh, the company that was applying and, and that sort of thing, got them the information. Then they went ahead and filed the application. A couple of weeks later, I received the good news back that they've filed the application and that process had all started. Now here you'll see they gave me instructions uh, in terms of how to enroll in brand registry. And essentially they just said that it might take up to a couple of weeks time and to at that point then try enrolling in brand registry. And basically if brand registry accepts my trademark, then it'll have already been in the system and I can proceed or I might need to wait uh, a few days longer. So at this point you would go in and enroll a new brand in the brand registry portal or if you've never had brand registry before, then you can create an account here for the very first time. So that's the process of using the IP Accelerator program to get your trademark for brand registry purposes. Of course, you still need to wait a few months to get the actual trademark registered and live, but if like me, you're only gonna be doing this for the purpose of getting brand registry, then I think this is the perfect program for you. I've found it to be more or less the same price as I've seen from other companies. So the fact that you can speed up the brand registry process by like nine months or more makes it seem like a no brainer to me. So that wraps up everything I wanna talk about as far as branding and trademarks go. So I was on Jungle Market, Jungle Scout Market to be correct last night to, and looking at some options for getting someone to create the, the custom packaging and like this particular listing that I was looking at, he was saying like, okay, these are the things I need. Like the, I need a high quality logo. I need like any text that you're gonna need on the custom packaging. So I thought maybe we could at least start that process of brainstorming like, what do we want on the packaging? Yes. Do we need to get a logo done? Because as soon as, yeah, as soon as we find the packaging, we're gonna need to have all that stuff for a designer. I think, you know, having a, cute little dog on there, like a little drawing of a dog or like a paw print or like something. I mean, do we want to say Jungle Creations is the, is the brand? Yeah, I okay. think so. So we need that's to one, yeah. get that trademarked, right? So that's... Yeah, I can get onto that process. That's kind of on my list to, of things to do. But yeah, I can get started with the IP Accelerator and see if we can get that happening. But yeah, let's just work from Jungle Creations as the brand okay. name. Now, do we have a logo for Jungle Creations? No, but we can so, we could get one as part of this process. Okay, so yeah, let's get a, we need to get a logo for Jungle Creations. After you come up with your brand name, the natural progression is to go into packaging and packaging design, which will be your next steps in order for your supplier to begin creating your order. So let's start off by talking about general packaging philosophy. Why is it important? Should we spend any time on it? All these different types of things. So if your plan, like mine, is to exclusively sell on Amazon, then packaging and the way we think about it is a little bit different than if we were, say, selling at Walmart or, or somewhere else where customers are walking by, looking at the shelves, and we're trying to attract their attention to purchase our particular product. On Amazon, they're usually not buying because of the packaging. That's just not how you attract customers there like you would at Walmart or a retail store, okay? So why is packaging important on Amazon? Well, it's still the first point of contact and impression that a customer gets of your product. They open up an Amazon box and then they see your packaging. So think about the experience of opening something like an iPhone box or really anything from Apple. It's always a super nice experience, right? And on that line of thinking, some products lend themselves more to really nice packaging. So for instance, if you're positioning your product as a premium product or 
maybe a gift type item. For these types of products, it's more important to think about your packaging. On the other end of the scale are products like our jungle sticks, for example. With those, we're not going for this high-end kind of feel. I would say there's also not the same expectation from the customer's point of view to have this really nice packaging for this type of product. People just want their bamboo marshmallow sticks and that's about it. So the packaging for these is very simple. It's just a poly bag with one label on it. We did add a, a cute little recipe though as a, a bit of an add-on. It has the FN SKU barcode printed on there that Amazon requires. And we figured this would be enough for this product. For the following million dollar case study product, which was the Jungle Snugs Baby Hooded Towels, there was a slightly different approach. So this one is in a box, then inside of the box is the towel and the washcloth, and overall this one has a little more of a high-end feel about it. The thinking was that this would be a product that people might like to give as a gift at say a baby shower or for Christmas or a one year birthday party or you know that kind of thing. So we wanted this to look a little bit nicer and have a more premium feel. The other factor was that the competition was a little tougher on this product so we also wanted this product to stand out as much as possible. So these are all the kinds of things that you can consider when thinking about your own packaging. All right, so factories will have default packaging for most of their products. You would start out by asking them what packaging comes with that product, and then you can kind of discuss from there what you would like for yours. So for the Jungle Snugs, this was just a poly bag to begin with. But for the reasons that I mentioned just before, we wanted a box and for it to have a nicer feel. So we asked for a box, and then there was a little bit of an additional cost to get that one. Another note on the Jungle Snugs is that there's this small opening on them. Because it was less than one inch, we weren't required to have a poly bag covering that. And so at first we went without a poly bag because we liked the experience of the customer being able to touch the fabric and felt it was small enough to avoid any risk of damage. But then we were considering that they will be sitting on Amazon shelves and Basically, if you just want to make absolutely certain that there's no dust or humidity or anything like that gets inside, then it's probably safer to have a poly bag inside, which in our case, the factory offered for free. So we ended up going with that. Also keep in mind that if you do have a poly bag, you know, just big enough for an infant to put over its head, then you do have to have a suffocation warning either placed on the poly bag with a sticker or printed directly onto your poly bag. You could also just Google suffocation warning and your factory should be very familiar with printing these types of things on poly bags. So you've found out what the default packaging is that your supplier offers. From here, I talk to them about what other options they have available, or if you have something specific in mind, then you can ask them about that. They'll then give you pricing based on each option. For the dog mats, this is the packaging that it comes in by default. I don't really see it as a premium or a gift type item, so I'm happy enough with this default packaging. And also keep in mind that you can change this in the future. So I reached out and asked for the packaging template. This is what I received. And with my own rudimentary Photoshop skills, I quickly turned around this as our packaging using the logo that we have. Now you'll notice it does look pretty similar to the existing template, which I think is just based off of uh, one of the competitors that is actually selling on Amazon. And I was trying to like make it look kind of different to what they had. But the other thing as well is that I was trying to turn this around really quickly. So it really just came down to speed so that I could get an order in and get them started on manufacturing the product so I could also have something to share with you guys. The other thing that I was keeping in mind is that, uh, okay, I had to purchase, uh, I think it was 500 units of this packaging to begin with. So I do have to stick with this packaging for the first 500 units, but that now buys me time, another sort of couple of months or however long it takes to get through those to get better packaging design 
created. If I had more time up front, I would have gotten a professional to design this. But again, for the sake of speed, I just quickly whipped it together myself. Now, we often get asked, do you need to have your brand name on the packaging? And when it comes to brand names, that is something that I would recommend putting on the packaging and the product if possible, because this does make it harder for other people to come in and copy and sell their product on your listing. So if a customer then opens up a counterfeit or a competitor's product and it doesn't have your branding on it, it's very clear that it's not your product and makes this situation a lot easier to resolve with Amazon. When you're thinking about the design style, if we come back to the jungle snugs, you'll notice that the design here is pretty minimalistic, which maybe comes down to taste. I know this is what Greg quite liked at the time, and I also like these simpler types of designs. They feel more kind of future-proof and just look better in my opinion. Also, your supplier might charge you by the number of colors that you're printing on your packaging. So the more colors you have, the more expensive it could be. So that's another good reason to keep it simple. So the next step is that you then ask your supplier for a design template for the packaging, which they then send you. In order to get the design made, you can hire professionals, or if you don't have design skills, you can do it yourself. One great place is the Jungle Scout market. This is a marketplace that we built for Amazon specialists to advertise their services to sellers like yourself, and you can get some really good deals on there. There's a lot of packaging designers that have been pre-vetted by our team, and you can also see their reviews that other customers have left for them. Other resources that you can use are places like Fiverr or Upwork or 99designs.com. This is actually a site that Kerry and I used to get a logo designed for Jungle Creations. They run what's called a design contest where multiple designers all submit their designs and essentially compete to be the winning design. So what's cool is that you can even share all of the designs or the design page and get friends and family and colleagues to vote on the designs if you want some additional feedback and help in choosing. So that's exactly what we did. The contest ran over a few days, so we checked in each day, excited to see the new submissions and provide feedback on the changes that we were after. We did spend a little bit of time working with our favorite designers and thinking about what we wanted. But like I've said before, this is one of those decisions that in the scheme of things, when you're just selling on Amazon, isn't super important. So just pick something that you like and move on. 99 Designs is like a very common one, but it is more expensive. It's like $300. I've used one before called 48 Hour Logo, which okay. starts from about half that price. Any first impressions, anything that jumps out? I think this one pops out at me a little bit more. Okay. I like that one a little bit, but maybe okay. it needs a little bit of a, maybe. I like that one. Yeah. I like that one. I kind of like that, but I wouldn't pick it sort of thing. Yeah. Like it's something like, oh, it's something cool about it, but it's just a little bit hard to read and stuff. Yeah. Uh, there's just too much going on here. Is this ripping off the poster it's for like Lion the, King? It looks kind of like it, yeah. <laughs> it looks like it's meant to be a movie poster. <laughs> it does, actually. I like this one. Mm, yeah. I like this one as well. I would change mm. the leaf and maybe do bamboo or something. Yeah, this is probably my favorite. What was the other ones that he had? Didn't like as much. I mean, I, I like it, but again, I feel like the simpler it is, the more timeless it will be. If this looked more like a tree branch or something, it might look better. It might make it seem more of a, like a leaf brush. Yeah. So for you, do you feel like that's the only part to change? Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. Okay. How about you? Yeah, actually, I, I kind of like the simplicity of the, of the font and yeah. everything. Now, of course, you can use 99designs for packaging design as well. And there are a bunch of other design contest websites out there that might be a little more affordable. Now, here's some quick tips on product packaging. Keep in mind the file format used, which is usually .ai or .eps files, or maybe a PDF. If you're working with a professional designer, then you may not have to deal with this, but keep it in mind because that's the format that you're probably gonna need to get from your supplier. 
It's called a, a vector file, which is usually used for printing. Some things you need to print on your packaging. First up is the country of origin. So made in China, for instance. You could also say something like designed in the US, but made in China if you wanted to. But the country of origin at the very least is required. Then there are different packaging requirements or certification requirements, which will depend on your product type. So for instance, something like lighting or light bulbs or electronics, there's different certifications for those types of products. One good resource for this is inspection companies. So companies like Kima or VTrust, they're usually pretty familiar with these types of requirements and those of customs and that sort of thing. So you can always ask them to see what's required of your particular packaging. Another good way to get this information is actually just off of your competitors, especially the more reputable ones, such as big brands, for instance. And you can also just ask Dr. Google for package requirements for your product. Sometimes it comes up with some good information, sometimes it doesn't, but unfortunately from what I've seen, there's no one good central resource for all these packaging requirements for all different types of products. Now, another question that we often get regarding packaging is what barcode am I supposed to put on the packaging? And this is something that we find people often get confused about. So what barcode do you need on your packaging? For Amazon, the only barcode that you need is the FN SKU, which is a barcode generated by Amazon once you create your listing. You get a unique FN SKU for every single product or product variation that you create. What it is, is basically a unique identifier that tells Amazon what your product is. If you can imagine their warehouses are receiving thousands of products every day, they need to scan them in, and then when they fulfill customer orders, they also need to know what your product is to be able to get it off the shelf and send it out. So this is why they need the FN SKU barcode just to tell their system what your product is. The confusion here is usually with something called a UPC barcode, which you purchase from a place called gs1.org. The reason you need the UPC barcode is in order to create your listing. That's it. So let's go through an example of this. So come up to catalog, add products. I'm adding a product not sold on Amazon. Now you can select the category that you want to list in, or an easier way is to come down to search. I'm gonna search for dog mats in our example. Then it gives you some suggested categories here. We wanna to try to find the most relevant for our product. If I take a look through here, I'm thinking maybe it is very similar to feeding mats. So for this example, I'm gonna go with this particular category, but also keep in mind, if you're a little bit stuck as to what category to choose, uh, a great little hack here is to check out what categories your competitors are in. So if we do that now, I'm just gonna go washable pee pads. And if I just come down here, I'm gonna choose this guy. We've used him as an example before. Then what we can do is scroll down the page to the product details section down here. And now we can see that it is in pet supplies, dog training pads, and trays. So this is how you'd go about finding out what category your competitors are in. And oftentimes that'll be a good category for you also. Now here, when you're creating a listing, right up the top here, it's asking for a product ID the options that you've got here, the main ones that people use would be either a UPC or an EAN barcode. These are ones that you can purchase online and then input directly into here. It is required to enter this in and it won't let you move forward until you do. So this is the step where you need to have a UPC or EAN barcode in order to create your listing. Again, once you get past this step, you don't need that any longer on your actual product. All right, so once you've created your listing, all you then need is the FN SKU barcode on your packaging if you're only intending to sell on Amazon. 
If you're planning to sell on Walmart or Shopify or other places, then you might need the UPC barcode as well. But if you're selling exclusively on Amazon, the FN SKU barcode is all you need. So let me show you how to get that one. From Seller Central, come up to Inventory, Manage Inventory. You select your product here, click the drop down, and come to Print Item Labels. Click this one again, then you can download, and this gives you a PDF of your FN SKU barcode. Now, in terms of getting that onto your packaging, these are your options. Number one, get your supplier to stick the labels on. They often do this for free. Number two, get it printed directly onto your packaging so that no one ever has to stick labels on. Or third, you can get Amazon to stick on the labels for you. And for this, they'll charge usually 20 to 30 cents per unit. If you wanted to go with this option, you do so in the shipment creation process, which I'll be sharing in another episode. All right, so we've covered a lot in this episode. Definitely go back and rewatch where you need to, but don't get overwhelmed. I know there's a lot here, but you only need to take one step at a time. If you do that, I guarantee that you can do this. And remember, if you're following along with a million dollar case study and you wanna start your own Amazon business, then I encourage you to join the Million Dollar Case Study Challenge. The first steps are joining our private Facebook group. Each week, you'll receive action items so that you can follow along and be building your own business. The link is in the description. And also, if you've gotten a lot of value from this episode, then make sure to hit that like button down below and even subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you never miss another episode. In the next episode of the Million Dollar Case Study, we're gonna be talking about all things shipping. Learn exactly how to get your product from your supplier into Amazon and all the steps along the way. I'll see you then. So let's start off by talking about general packaging philosophy. Philosophy? Philosophy. General, yeah. <laughs> oh no, it's gonna be a blooper, isn't it? All right, we'll probably just jump cut all of this stuff. Bloop, 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 bloop. Cheerio, bye. Hooroo.